court with his counsel, Mr. Chernoff, Mr. Flanagan, Mr. Gorgian, Mr. Pena. The people are represented by their counsel, Mr. Walgren and Ms. Brazil. All 12 jurors and five alternates are present. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Let me start off by apologizing. There were serious traffic issues this morning, and they were complicated by serious elevator problems that we had this morning. And as a consequence, you were inconvenienced, as were others involved in the proceedings. I'm sorry for the logistical problems this morning. You've been in good spirits. Please continue to remain in good spirits. Uh, I did provide you with extensive jury instructions on Friday afternoon. I provided you with verbal instructions as well as printed instructions, which you have before you. Those instructions will continue throughout the course of your jury service in this case. I also provided you with verbal and written admonitions and orders regarding your conduct, which of course will remain during your jury service in this case. Let me address a few topics, if I may, at this juncture. Uh, first of all, at any point in the proceedings, if you feel you need a break to use the facilities or for some other reason, just raise your hand or otherwise notify us and we'll be happy to accommodate you. Don't feel embarrassed if you need to excuse yourself for a few moments. There may be points during the trial when you are excused from the courtroom. That happens rather frequently. So there will be times when I will ask you to please step down out of the jury box and of course be careful when you step down and to go into the jury room for a few moments. We may be discussing some legal issues that really have no concern for you. So please uh, take that into account and know that there may be occasions when you are excused. Uh, also, there may and in all likelihood will be delays during the course of the trial. I'm going to try to do my very best to keep things running. But in the real world of trials, things happen. There may be delays. Uh, there may be issues that develop, and they may occasion delays. And if there are, uh, well, I once again apologize for them. I'm going to try to avoid them as much as possible, but things do happen. People get sick. People get delayed. There are issues that develop which we must address. So if there are any delays, please remain patient, and please understand that those delays are my responsibility. Don't take it out against any of the parties in this case. It has absolutely nothing to do whatsoever with them. At this point in the proceedings, the attorneys have an opportunity to present to you what is called an opening statement. An opening statement is an overview or a roadmap of what a particular attorney believes or expects the evidence will show in this case. An opening statement is not evidence, neither is it argument. The attorneys are not permitted or allowed to present argument at this point in the proceedings. And as I mentioned to you on Friday, you certainly may take notes at any points during the course of the trial. And each of you has been provided with a booklet with no paper and pens. You can feel free to take notes, but remember the cautionary instructions I provided to you on note-taking, namely that it may very well interfere with your ability to evaluate the demeanor of witnesses. So take all that into account when you hear any opening statement of a party. Thank you. At this time, the parties having announced ready, Mr. Walgren, do the people wish to present an opening statement? Yes, Your Honor. You may. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the evidence in this case will show that Michael Jackson literally put his life in the hands of Conrad Murray. The evidence in this case will show that Michael Jackson trusted his life to the medical skills of Conrad Murray. The evidence will further show unequivocally that that misplaced trust had far too high a price to pay. That misplaced trust in the hands of Conrad Murray cost Michael Jackson his life. On June 25th, 2009, Michael Jackson 
was pronounced dead. May I ask the clerk to dim the lights, Your Honor? Mrs. Benson? Mr. Sam, please, Mrs. Benson. Thank you. He was just 50 years old. He died alone in his bed on the second floor of his Holmby Hills mansion. In the house at the time were the defendant, Conrad Murray, and Michael's three young children, and some staff that helped run the home. Because there was no uh, immediate, obvious cause of death, uh, the coroner's office soon took a very active role in the investigation, not only performing an autopsy, but doing detailed toxicology analysis to determine what caused the death of Mr. Jackson at 50 years of age. And what we learned through that investigation is that propofol, lidocaine, diazepam, uh, a metabolite of diazepam called nordiazepam, uh, lorazepam, and midazolam, all testing positive in the heart blood 